Hey, we have this expression we say all the time here, success begins on Sunday. We want your life to become what God's designed it to become. And that means by being faithful to church week in and week out, you actually set yourself up for a successful life. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be successful. Anybody else? Okay, half of you want to be failures. Good job, everybody. I want to be a success. I want to be a success with my family, be a success personally. I want to be a success. I want to make sure I don't get tongue-tied there because that would come out the wrong way. I want to be a success with church. Anyway, and then forget it. Success begins on Sunday. There you go. Amen. How many of you have ever worn a glove before? Let me ask you a question. Anybody ever worn a glove before? Okay, there's a few of you that are wondering. That's interesting. Um, gloves, 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 gloves. I love gloves. You know, the glove has no power on its own. Can't do anything. Is that glove working for me right now? It's a glove. The glove has no power in and of itself. It can't lift on its own. It can't grab on its own. It can't warm my hand over here if it's over there. Right? The glove just has no function. It's not until a hand is put in a glove that the glove actually has any kind of function to it. Does that make sense? You're trying with me? So today I want to talk to you about the importance of us being the glove and the Holy Spirit being the hand. That our lives seem to be a little bit low-key, not powerful, not it, but then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and we have all the power the Spirit has. Before the Spirit of God's in our life, we're just an empty glove. But when the hand of God is put in our lives, we begin to experience all that God has designed for us. You're the glove. The problem is every person wants to be the hand. I need to be in control. I need to have the power. I need to have the strength. direct our steps or give power in our lives. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, he was a British preacher in the late 1800s, he said this, without the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. We are ships without the wind, branches without sap, coals without fire. We are useless without God. We need God's Spirit in our lives. So today, here's the message I want to give you today. Embrace the glove, receive the hand. My job's to embrace. I'm just the glove, but I'm going to receive his hand on my life. Here's what the scripture declares. But you will receive power. Everybody say power. power. 
when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me somewhere, some places, no, everywhere. That's why we partner with programs like Project Rescue. Because they can do things in places we could never do. 500,000 young kids rescued from sex slavery and all we get is this. Church, I'm telling you, that's what we're a part of. We're part of something bigger, something larger than just what you see in this room. We're part of a global mission to turn things around. You will be my witnesses. And he said you're going to do it in Jerusalem first. Jerusalem was their home city. So he basically said, you're going to receive power, and you're going to be a witness for me in your hometown first. You don't have to go overseas to be a missionary. You just got to go across your street. You got to tell somebody somewhere because you recognize I'm just the glove. He's the hand. So what if your neighbors think you're crazy? They already do anyway. We're at Pastor Matt and Pastor Gina's house yesterday, and we're over there. We're praying over little baby Emerson, and we're all, and Pastor Mary's leading in person. She goes, everybody stretch a hand. So there's about, I don't know, 30 of us stretching hands over baby Emerson, just extending a hand. And I'm thinking, what do the neighbors think? Who cares? At some point, everybody's going to think everybody's crazy because you know what? Everybody's crazy. So we might as well just join the club. See, when you embrace the glove, the Bible teaches you ultimately receive the power. Everybody's looking for power in this world. Everyone's looking for a place to belong when it's really a person to belong to. And when we surrender our lives to Christ, we are basically saying, God, I'm just the glove. You're the hand that directs my life. You direct my words. What kind of power do you get? Scripture tells us exactly what kind of power you get when you embrace the glove. It's this. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Any believers in the house today? Here's what it says. They will cast out demons in my name. That's pretty powerful. You ever met a demon? I'm not talking about your spouse. I was going to say mother-in-law, but that wouldn't be good. I know. See, it was better to say sp Anyway. They'll cast out demons in my name. Now, that's pretty powerful. Now, you may not believe that there's a devil. I do. If there's light, there's darkness. If there's good, there's evil. If there's God, there's a devil. I don't believe in the devil. The devil told you that. At some point, you got to recognize there's an enemy that's out there. And that enemy has agents. Just like God has angels, the devil has demons. And they have assignments against people. And he said, you're going to be able to cast them out. No, you don't have to worry about demons. I don't know. Demons. Yeah, it's weird. But I'm not worried about them. Why? Because I've been given authority over them. So, says they'll speak in new languages. We're going to talk about that in a minute. They'll be able to handle snakes with safety. Come on, can we bring those uh, snakes out of the back? How many would like to try that in church? Hey, let's just see. Pull out a cobra, a black snake. Let's just see. Come on, latch it right. It's not about being stupid. You know, God doesn't bless stupid. So you handle snakes with safety. If they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. For years, I drank Mountain Dew by the gallons every day. That's poison. And yet, I'm still going. I've got leftover caffeine from 20 years ago. They'll be able to place hands on the sick, and they'll be healed. See, I think a lot of believers today want the power of God for selfish reasons. But the Bible teaches us the power of God is designed for supernatural revelations. It's not about selfish reasons. It's supernatural revelation. See, some want the power, but they don't want the person. They want to be the hand when they've been called to be the glove. So you cannot have true spiritual power without embracing the person of the Holy Spirit. See, the goal of faith is not what we gain, but who we get. It's not about, oh, if I, can, if I serve God, I get all the blessings of God. And that is true. 
The Bible says if you're obedient to him, the blessings will overwhelm you. I want to be overwhelmed with blessings. But I don't want the bless. I don't want the blessings. Sorry, Siri was talking to me. She said, here's what I found about the Holy Spirit. There was nothing there because it's Siri. Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg. Mark. I have ADD. It's true. Doesn't take much to get distract, you know, distract me. Uh, to all of our guests here today, I apologize in advance for that. Where was I? The goal of our faith is not what we gain, but who we get. So the Holy Spirit doesn't just want to empower you today. He wants to educate you on who he is. Some people want the power without the education. They want to have the emotion without the experience of who God really is in our life. So the Holy Ghost doesn't just empower you. He wants to educate you. The Holy Spirit is the hand that unleashes everything on you that you need to be. Now, I don't know about you, but I always want to be what God's designed me to be. And that means I've got to recognize I'm the glove. He's the hand. So here's some really quick hits on what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. You ready? Number one, he's your teacher. John 14, 26 says he teaches us all things. So I don't have to worry about, okay, I got to know this. I got to have a better this. No, he is your teacher. He teaches you the truth of God's word, but he also teaches you the truth about life. The Holy Spirit convicts you of sin. I don't like that one. Nobody does. Nobody likes to be corrected. Let's be honest. Anybody? Now, does it feel good? The Bible says no discipline at the present seems joyous but grievous, but in the end it produces a harvest of right living. If you tell me you like discipline, I'll tell you you're not normal. Because nobody likes discipline because it's painful. True correction is painful. It hurts a little bit. When you hear a message that might conflict with your personal belief, you're like, ouch! Ooh, that person makes me feel guilty. That's why a lot of people come to church. They feel like this sense. They don't know what it is. They say, I'm, I feel guilty when I'm there. That's not guilt. That's conviction. So Holy Spirit say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. You're getting off course. He's also the source of true revelation, which means you can't have truth without him in your life. The Holy Spirit guides you into all truth, John 16, 13. The Holy Spirit gives us gifts of service. In other words, gifts to help reach people and build the church of Jesus Christ. He didn't just give you your gifts so you can get Benjamins, greenbacks. He gave you your gifts so you could build the kingdom of God. The Bible says the Spirit is our seal who guarantees us salvation, Ephesians 1, 13. He helps us in our weakness. You ever been weak? You ever didn't have the strength? And you wonder, how am I standing right now? I'm thinking of Lorraine in our church. Several years ago, she lost her husband. And I thought, man, how's she going to get through this? But she's out here serving on guest relations. She smiled. She was just praying with a young lady that was going through something. I'm thinking like, man, you know who gave Lorraine the strength to get through that? It was the Spirit of God that was on the inside of her life. He helps us in our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit also, according to Romans 8, renew us, uh, renews our lives and sanctifies us. He seals us, sanctifies our life. He renews our life, makes it feel like it's always fresh. That's why you could serve the Lord like me for 30 some years and you still feel like you're getting more octane from God than anything else. Because he's renewing your life. That's why for me, I don't look a day over 50. I am 50, by the way. He's renewing me every day. The Bible says the Holy Spirit helps us make wise decisions. Galatians chapter 5. Oh, man. God, you let me get in the credit card debt. God did not fill out that application for you. He did not lie that you made 150K a year when you only made 90. Oh, they'll never know. Oh, they don't care. Because they're going to charge you 29.9% .9 interest. And you're going to be paying that off for the rest of your life. Anyway. That was for somebody. I don't know who needed that, but somebody needed that. Helps us make wise decisions. you got to make wise decisions. Here's the worst thing you could do with a decision. Is make a decision without making a Holy Spirit decision. 
Got to ask, God, give me wisdom in this. Every day I say, God, give me wisdom. God, I need wisdom on how to lead the church. I need wisdom on how to lead my family. I need your wisdom. Because if I don't have his wisdom, I got Todd's wisdom. And I don't know about you, but if you've been around me for five minutes, you realize that guy ain't got no wisdom. You need the wisdom of God on your life. And then last, simple, he empowers you to be bold in your faith. And without him, you're just a glove. But with the Holy Ghost in your life, you have the power to overcome, the power to outlast, and the power to obey God's word, every single line of it. And that's not just a promise. It's a fact. There's promises in the Bible, but those promises are much more of a priority. Listen, G. Morgan Campbell, he's a British preacher, he's a prolific author way back when. One day he was visiting some uh, elderly ladies, and he would read the Bible to them. One time he read the Bible, Matthew 28, 20, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He said, isn't that a wonderful promise? One of the ladies said, oh, young man, that's not a promise, that's a fact. See, when you read the Bible, it's not just empty promises. They are facts you can rely on. So when he says he wants to fill you with his spirit so you can live an overcoming life, it's not just a promise, it's a fact. The only person that gets in the way of the fact is you, Jack. I'm ready for my career, auditioning for the worship team after. See, every, every promise in the Bible, every statement of the Bible is not a wish. It's a fact. I mean, this vintage book is not a fable. This God that we worship, he's not a dead God. He's a living Savior. It's a fact. Every word, every detail, every promise. And it's the Spirit of God that empowers us to not just live the life we're called to, but also to believe the book we're called to live by. You're going to need the Holy Spirit in our culture today yes. to make sure that you are using this book right. Because this culture is rapidly deteriorating in every area. It's the Spirit of God that empowers us to not just live the life we're called to, but to leave the, believe the book we're supposed to live by. And that's why we need the presence of the Holy Ghost in our lives. See, without the Spirit of God, we can't embrace the truths of the Bible. And if you can't embrace the truth of the Bible, all of it, you can't embrace the God of the Bible. And if you don't embrace the truths of the Bible, all of them, you won't embrace the God of the Bible, which means you'll never, ever embrace truly the Savior of the world. It all starts with, will you embrace every promise, every fact, everything in the Word of God? See, it's more than just getting God's presence so we can have powerful services or supernatural moments. The Spirit of God gives us the ability to overcome temptation, culture, truth, uh, uh, evil, and our own evil desires. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. We're the glove. He's the hand. And too often we're trying to be the hand. So let me give you a few quick hits of the Holy Spirit, and then we're going to pray. First, we already mentioned this, but I'm going to drill down. The Holy Spirit will convict you. Did you say say amen to that? Hey, man, you say it louder. You were the only one who said, that's what I'm talking about, see? See, you're the only one paying attention. I'm kidding. Holy Spirit convicts you. Scripture declares this. John 16, 8. He will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Oh, you got to look at that in three parts. Number one, he convicts you of your sin. Ouch, I don't like that. Preachers preaching on that. Oh, my gosh, he talks about it. I don't like it. Listen, if it's in the Bible, we're called to preach on it. Okay? Whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not. He convicts the world of his sin. In other words, if we're doing anything contrary to the word of God, that is called sin. Okay, anything contrary to the word of God is sin. Now, by your own admission, you said... You, but also convicts us of God's righteousness. A lot of times we miss that part. Convicts us of our sin, but also convicts us of his righteousness. Ooh, he is a holy God. He is a righteous judge. It's fair in all his ways. And it convicts us of the coming judgment. Uh oh, listen, you will act holy if you know, you know he's coming back tonight to take you to heaven. How many of you would apologize to somebody if you knew Jesus was going to 
you tonight. No, no, I know it sounds silly, you know, but, but if you knew at midnight tonight you were going to breathe your last breath, how many of you would make some phone calls today? Hey, I, I got to make sure. Hey, you know, hey, I know I haven't talked to you in 20 years, but I'm sorry for what I said to you. I know your wife's a terrible cook, and I shouldn't have said that publicly. My brother, incidentally, when he got married, my brother Kevin, my oldest brother, when he got married, uh, his wife made a dinner. And uh, so he's praying over the dinner. We were there, and he said, Lord, thank you for these burnt offerings. Do you, anyway. That's a true story, actually. So powerful, Elton's leaving. But if you knew tonight was your last night, would you act differently? Scripture reveals that we are not to do what our sinful nature describes or desires. If you think you're the hand, you're going to make your own rules. Students, you need to hear this. If you think you're the boss in your family, you're going to buck against every rule in your home. You're just proving you know nothing about the glove. When you recognize you're just a glove, you'll allow the hand to direct your life called authority. There's a blessing in authority. There's prosperity in authority. There's doors being opened for you when you're walking in his authority. And too often what people want is they want to be the hand. And so when the Holy Spirit says you shouldn't do that, no, I'm the hand. And he's like, <laughs> give me here, Elton, really quick. This is what I think that God, if I was God, this is what I would do. I'd take the glove and I would be here, you could do it back, Elton. No, Just, no, no. Yeah, go ahead. I, seriously, you have to. I feel terrible now. <laughs> I give you permission. It's been an interesting service. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Truth is, every person has a propensity to do what's evil. I would never do that. You don't know until the pressure is put on. That's why we ought to be gracious people, shouldn't we? That when someone fails or falters, we shouldn't be kicking them while we're down. Oh, man, can I, church, can I talk to you for a minute? Can you stop being the church, and I'm talking big C church, that's brutalizing every other church out there because they're not like your church? This person doesn't have that. that one. People get on social media, they hate the church. Do you recognize lost friends are looking at what you put on social media? And if you're bashing the church on social media, why would they ever come to your church? Why would they ever want your Jesus? That's why I'm grateful for Diamond. She goes to work. She's bragging on her job at Ulta. And two of her wonderful friends are with us from Ulta today. We're so honored to have you. Why did that happen? Oh, the church sucks. <laughs> Terrible, man. The pastor, man. He's wearing white. It's not even Memorial Day yet. tomorrow but why did they decide to come because she wouldn't shut up about her church that's what we ought to be doing we'll be celebrating that you know sinful nature leads to death separation from God but when you submit to the spirit you prove that you're a child of the most high God embrace the glove and finally the Holy Spirit will change you probably the most powerful thing that the Holy Spirit does is he changes our life he changes everything about us he changes our beliefs. He changes our behaviors. He changes how we see ourselves. And he gives us a boldness. Scripture declares this. 2 Corinthians says, So all of us who have been had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of God. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and, more, and more like him as we are changed into his glorious yeah. image. Yeah. The Spirit's job is to change us to look more like Jesus, not your pastor. Not some televangelist. Not somebody you espouse to be. The Spirit of God doesn't make you into an incredible singer like some of those who have that gift. The Spirit of God changes you to look more and more like Jesus. 
the Spirit is going to change you. And if you don't like change, you ain't going to like the Holy Spirit. That's why some people can't stay in our church because we change things all the time. Something ain't broke, break it. You got to change things from time to time. See, God desires you to be more and more like his son. Let me ask you a question. How many of you truly want to be more like Jesus? Want to be more like Jesus? The greatest, not just teacher that walked the planet, not just prophet that walked the planet, but savior of the world. Now, we'll never be the savior of the world, but we can help give the savior to the world. And that happens when we become more and more like him. Jesus loved the world so much that he gave his life for the world. And yet we have an American religion that people can't even be faithful to an hour and a half on a Sunday morning. And if we can't be faithful to an hour and a half on Sunday, you can't tell me that you're reading your Bible faithfully during the week. Just can't tell me that. Well, I don't need the church. No, you need the church. How do I know that? I need the church every single day. The Holy Spirit changes you. He changes your perspective. How many of you came to church with one mindset, but since you've been in church, your mindset has changed? Your perspective changes. Your, your hopes change. Your dreams change. That is only possible through the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. He simply said this. He said, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. In other words... Don't have anything coming into your life that will alter your state of mind that will keep you from your mind being consecrated to God. Avoid anything that will distort your reality so you miss the supernatural reality. Run from it. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you're full of the Holy Spirit, there's the promises or the facts. He's going to convict you. He's going to correct you. He's going to change you. One of the changes, I think, makes it so powerful about what he does is he gives us a boldness. I'm not bold because I'm smart. I'm bold because I'm full of the Holy Spirit. And every day, I ask the Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me. Empty me of myself and fill me with your presence. You know, so, you know, preacher that used to be on television, I think he still is in some parts, and he wrote a book called Good Morning Holy Spirit, and I always say, Good Morning Holy Spirit, I say it in his accent. You get up, and you, literally, that should be our day. God, thank you. Thank you for today. Good morning, God. Thank you for the blessings. Good morning, Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you empower me to live the life I've been designed to live. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He convicts you he corrects you, and he changes you. Not because he doesn't like who he made, but he's refining who he made so that you can be more and more like Jesus.